Hi guys, it's Emma. Okay, we're going to be talking today about Barrymore for you. So today, the 9th of July, at Chafee County Courthouse, the preliminary hearing for Barry Morphew started with people arriving around 5am. They were calling eight witnesses and 450 exhibits. Now Lauren Scharf, who you might have heard of before, she was in the courtroom today and she's been dropping information every time it's released regarding what exactly is going on in the courtroom. He's in court today for the murder of his wife, Suzanne Morphew, who went missing on Mother's Day. So she waited in line outside. She was blogging on Twitter, telling us all what was going on in the courtroom. She stated on Twitter that Barry Morphew's mum and daughters were there in the courtroom to support Barry. Barry was seated wearing a suit and tie and six attorneys were seated for the state. Now, Barry Morphew's attorney wanted to make an opening statement which lasted about one minute, but the judge said no. Now, the first witness was Commander Alex Walker, and he was taking the stand. Now, he works for the Chafee County Sheriff's Office, and he'd worked for the 11th Judicial District as well. Now, DA Linda Stanley was asking the questions about his history, about Barry Morphew's history in the preliminary hearing. Commander Walker said that Mallory Morphew couldn't get hold of her mum on Mother's Day, and that was Suzanne, she was trying to wish her a happy Mother's Day, but the texts were just not going through. So she reached out to her neighbour. Deputy Brown found the bicycle shortly after being notified of Suzanne being missing. He immediately put on his body-worn camera when he got to Highway 50 and County Road 225, which is where he noted that there was no blood, no skid marks, no brake marks, no struggle, and no damage to the bicycle. They also were about to show the video footage of the body cam worn by um, Deputy Brown that day, but uh, obviously we can't see that. They're not um, allowing, they weren't allowing cameras in the courtroom, so we haven't seen that, but Lauren did. So maybe if you go across to her channel later, then hopefully she might have a bit of more information on what was in that video. So Suzanne and Barry's daughters were holding hands and crying in the courtroom as they watched the video of the deputies discovering this bicycle. Now the deputies then asked for someone to contact the hospital. The deputies then moved the bike off the hillside and laid the bike back down. Deputies were chatting on the video about how close the bike was to the house. They were also asking about scenarios as to what might have happened and this was all on the video cam footage. The deputy started yelling for Suzanne in the video as they approached the bike. The bike's front wheel was facing down and the, the side of the hill. The deputy asks Barry to be called to describe the bike. I'm sorry if there's any noise in the background guys. Um, I'm doing mummy duties today. I've got the washing machine going, there's cars going past. I'm trying to make it as quiet as I can for you. So um, the bike, he described it, was navy with light blue pedals. Something is up with the front tyre, the deputy said. The deputy brought the tyre back up to County Road without gloves. Now, miles after his father, Miles and his father described places where Suzanne goes biking as well as where she typically what she typically wears to go biking. The deputy asked Miles what Barry and Suzanne's relationship was like, and they had some problems in the past. He said they also talked about separating. I've known this through Macy. He said. So I'm not quite sure who this Miles is. Maybe you can tell me in the comment section, one of the family members or maybe one of the boyfriends of the daughters. I'm not sure. Miles explains that he is one of the daughter's boyfriends. Oh, here we go. Miles explains that he is one of the daughter's boyfriends. He noticed that Suzanne's car was home and the bike was gone. He told deputies that Suzanne typically brings her car with her when she goes mountain biking. This was on the video cam. Now, Suzanne's phone last pinged at 4.23 a.m. on Monday the 10th, 2020, on the Poncha Springs tour. So, and Miles 
Miles Harvey was coming out of the garage when deputies arrived to the Morphew home. Deputy asked what path Suzanne would take, asks if, you know, she was an avid mountain biker, and the deputy describes how the bike was found, and Barry responded, it may have flipped. The deputy asked people not to touch the bike with their hands. Now, the body cam video of Barry Morphew getting to the scene around 8.46pm, he gets out of his truck and asks, where was the bike? He then asked, was there a crash? Walker and Barry Morphew, so that's um, the police officer, and Barry Morphew and George Davis had been touching the bike. He also confirmed that Suzanne's bike helmet was found a few days later. The helmet was not damaged. It was found on Highway 50, 10 metres from the road. Inside the helmet was a piece of paper with her name, number and family contact information on, which I found strange. I mean, if you're a cyclist, do you do that? I wouldn't think to do that, but anyway. A picture of Suzanne wearing a light blue helmet and matching jacket with a camel back and sunglasses is shown. She is on the Methodist mountain. The bike helmet was found 8.4 miles from the bike on May the 15th. Barry Morphew told the police walker that the RV park near the house was a suspicious location to be checked. And he also mentioned a mountain lion. Now, during an interview with Morphew, Walker said that Barry mentioned that Suzanne was biking regularly, but was new to it. Walker said that Barry Morphew mentioned his worst scare was someone picking her up during a 30-minute conversation with him. Suzanne's camelback was found in Suzanne's car. Sunglasses were found in Indiana inside the Range Rover. 10 plus agencies were involved with searching for Suzanne and the searches were ongoing to this day, Walker said. Barry mentioned to investigators at the time that Suzanne was his angel and described her as a wonderful person, very good relationship and loved her to death. Nielsen said that it's not unusual if Suzanne wouldn't text back because the cell phone service was bad at the house. This is after Barry had texted Suzanne Happy Mother's Day in the morning. Police Walker was at the scene when deputies found the bike and he witnessed that the deputies moved the bike immediately. She is asking if there are a lot of people on the dirt road of CR225 and asked if it was taped off. It was not taped off and yes, there was a lot of people on the road. Nielsen is now cross-examining Walker. And she asked if he authorised the arrest affidavit, the 129 pages. It took him weeks to write. She asked when he started writing the affidavit, but doesn't know when he started. Now, no blood of Suzanne's was found in the Morphew home. Investigators did not find any blood throughout this investigation, according to Police Walker. And Mallory's friend, Holly, went on the road trip with two daughters the weekend of the Mother's Day. They typically stay the night in the same bed at the Morphew's house. Mallory's bed sheets were stripped in the Morphew house. Nielsen said Barry would mention that Suzanne would clean the house before guests would arrive. Now, Barry Morphew mentioned to investigators at the time that he had never been involved in one and he hopes it does, does not stop in regards to searching for Suzanne. Now, Walker said a lot of agencies came together to find a lady, a lot of resources have been expanded and we are not going to stop. Over 70 law enforcement officers, so many analysts, scientists and Walker added it is the largest coordinated effort he has ever been involved in. Now Nielsen is now speaking about searches from aircraft drones, grid searches, canines, mines, ground penetrating radar, water teams, but Suzanne is still not found and hundreds of people have searched for her. A video on Google Maps was shared with the court made by a defense made by the defense team and it is shown of where the helmet was found. The state shows they have seen and wish to see it in in private before showing it to the courtroom but the judge said we don't have time for that. 
The helmet was found 10 metres down the Highway 50 and volunteers from the Chaffey County Sheriff's Office searched both sides of the Highway 50 from CR 225 to Monarch Mountain Lodge with line searches on Friday, May the 15th. He said, we've searched one mile and, f and five mile radius thoroughly. Searched a lot of square miles in a lot of areas. Just recently searched in a mine. George Davis was invested in searching for Suzanne for weeks and he showed investigators maps. Nielsen asked how, though, has a mile radius around the Morphew home been searched? Walker responds, there is still work that needs to be found. The home was under investigation for 10 days the first time. On May the 20th, the home was given back to the Morphews. Barry didn't get a chance to change clothes or get anything from the home. Now, more than 110 search warrants were issued and the first search warrant was on May the 11th, 2020 of the Morphew home, including the vehicles. On July the 10th, 18 law enforcement officers came back to the home, including 10 FBI agents. And fair to say that the search of the Morphew resident was lengthy and extensive. Now, Nielsen said that on July the 9th, 28 law enforcement officers were involved in the second search of the home, including 14 FBI officers, seven CBI agents and approximately six Chafee County deputies. Now, on, Ju on July the 8th, 2020, investigators asked to speak with Barry at his home and said they could bring pizza. Barry responded, don't bring food. We're grilling steaks. We can put two on for you. Now, according to Walker, Barry didn't know about the spy pen and its voice activated. Walker said Barry wasn't found having an affair. Suzanne was having an affair for two years. Now, the spy pen belonged to Suzanne Morphew. Sheila had talked about getting her this spy pen and Suzanne had suspected that Barry was having an affair. Now, this Liebler asked law enforcement if, if he was a target in the investigation. And a recording of the interview with Libra with law enforcement is about to be heard and the defence attorney wants a lot of time with Walker. Judge is worried about timing. Then Suzanne didn't tell anyone about this affair. Liebler did not come forward to law enforcement. Once law enforcement found him, he spoke to him. A man James named Jeff Liebler was Suzanne's lover. In November when is when law enforcement found out about the affair and they met up six times twice in Indiana. Wow. So then they had a 10 minute break in the courtroom. So it seems like they've spoken to somebody who's come forward to say that they were Suzanne's lover. So, I mean, depending on what you're thinking about this case and he has been arrested, that would be a point for somebody to get very angry over that. And, you know, that could be one of the reasons why this happened. Then they said, um, I know that Jeff went to high school with Suzanne in Alexandria in Indiana.